Hello and welcome to the NMS Prime channel. My name is Robin Sachse and I'm going to show you today how to configure the Cisco RF Gateway 10. First we are going to configure the DTI server and then the RF Gateway 10. For the installation we will need a USB to RS232 serial adapter cable and we will use the program called Minicom. Before we dive into the configuration, here's a video of the RF Gateway 10. Uh, the blue display at the top. On the right you can see the line cards and on the left are two supervisor cards with the management port used for configuring the RF Gateway 10 and the line cards. And at the bottom is a DTI time server which you can't really see here. And here it is from the back. Uh, you can see the DTI server at the bottom. This port right here will be used for configuration because this is the management port. And above are the power supplies, on the left the line cards and on the right the supervisor cards. So first I'm going to show the Minicom settings. Uh, it's the third option after starting Minicom-S. And uh, make sure that the path to your adapter is set correctly. In my case this is slash dev slash TD Epsilon USB 0. Uh, go check slash dev if you want to know what your adapter is called. Also make sure that it is plugged in. <laughs> the DDI and RF Gateway 10 use 9600 baud with 8 n one which means 8 data bits, no parity bit and 1 stop bit. Uh, the hard and soft flow controls are set to no. To show the booting sequence, we started Minicom fresh and gave the machine power and pressed return once in Minicom. And uh, anyways, if the machine is already running, you can just plug in the cable, start Minicom and press return once and the login screen should come up. Now log in with the uh, default username admin and the password is admin2. And uh, here we go. The prompt changed to TC1000 indicating that we successfully logged in. The first thing we are going to do is setting the machine configuration to factory. And now we enable all the interfaces with set interface state all enable. And then we set Ethernet 0 to static. And then we give it an IP address. And also we configure a net mask. And then we set the gateway. And after this we restart Ethernet 0. This takes a little bit of time and then hopefully it worked and that's it for the DTI server. And now onto the RF Gateway 10. Here we use the same settings with Minicom. Just plug in the adapters that Minicom and here we go. Don't forget to press return once and we are directly logged in because nothing has been configured. Enter enable and the uh, conf t to start the configuration. The prompt also changes. And here we set the host name to something generic and then we set the uh, service unsupported transceiver because we don't use the original SFPs.
And next we configure the login. For this video we just set it to admin with the password admin. The 15 is the privilege level. You can check this one with the command show privilege. And next we uh, configure the interface first Ethernet 1. And as you can see the prompt changes too. There we set an IP address and then the subnet mask. And then the last thing we are going to do is setting the gateway. And then with the uh, command line VTY015, we allow 16 simultaneous remote connections. And with login local, we tell the machine to use the uh, local user database for logins. And in this case, that would be our uh, admin user, which we uh, configured earlier. And then the last thing we're going to do is exit. Now for the next part of the configuration, we start again with Minicom while being directly connected to the machine and enter enable and conf t again. When uh, typing commands, you can also use tab for autocomplete. I'm using this right here for the uh, interface gigabit ethernet command. Uh, the first thing we did was showing us what the interface numbers for slot 3 were. And um, we disabled the uh, switch port, which means that it should operate like a router interface. Uh, this switches the interface to L3 mode, which means that the IP address command assigns an IP address and uh, a network mask to the interface. And the so-called L3 mode means that we are not talking about a so-called routed port. Uh, which can be configured with a layer 3 routing protocol. From uh, time to time, the machine will show some status message like here. Uh, don't let yourself get confused here. Just tap again to get your terminal line back. And uh, now we need to set up the uh, IP and net mask for the interface and then exit the uh, interface configuration. Now we set the uh, layer 2 tunnel protocol configuration for the RF gateway 10. And the uh, hello command configures the interval used to exchange hello keep alive packets in uh, layer 2 control channel. And we also set the uh, retransmit retries to 10 retries and the maximum timeout to 1. And then we enter the uh, DB configuration for the uh, uh, DB class 3G60. And uh, as always, the uh, prompt changes indicating that this worked. So there it is. And now we enter the MPEG transport stream MPT mode of the DP. And then we enter the uh, DP data session configuration. And our tunnel name is 3G6811. We also set a destination IP. Um, which is the uh, termination point of the DP. And then we enter L2 TP class configuration mode and then the uh, DP class configuration mode. And lastly, end. For this part of this video, we are logged in into one of our cable gateway CMTS and we enter the configuration 
and prepare our CMTS for the uh, RF Gateway 10. Uh, here we enable the uh, DOCSIS timing interface DDA based timing with the command cable clock DTI and configure the uh, gigabit Ethernet interface for the uh, controller 800 uh, by setting a description. And then we also set the uh, DB tunnel source IP address. And then we set the uh, negotiation to auto. And uh, the last thing we'll do is setting the uh, uh, interfaces all enabled with the command no shutdown. Then we enter the L2TP class and we set all the stuff we did previously. Uh, the uh, max retries is gonna be 20 and uh, the uh, Timeout is one second. And now follows the configuration for the DP class 3G60. Here we set the mode again to mode MPT and the DP tunnel with the destination IP is set too. The last command TOS100 is optional and this sets the value of the type of service byte for IP packages in the L2TP version 3 session. And now we are back onto the RF Gateway 10 and we enter the configuration mode again and set the QAM or QAM interfaces starting with QAM3 slash 1. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we disable the IP address and then we enter the interface QAM3 slash 1.1. And then with the uh, command cable mode DP remote learn, we set the mode of the uh, QAM channel. DP specifies the DP mode. Remote means this will be remotely configured and learn is an optional parameter set to the uh, QAM channel to learn mode so that the RF Gateway 10 can learn the channel configuration from our CMTS. Next comes the cable downstream TSID 311 which is the transport stream identifier and the last thing we do is we bind the DP tunnel to the QAM with the command DP DP tunnel 3G60801 and this is all now done for the interface QAM3 1.2 and 1.3 and 1.4 again. And uh, please note that we also change the TSID for each one. And uh, the last thing we do, everything gets saved with end and then exit. Back again on our cable gateway CMTS, we enter the configuration mode again. And here we set up a bunch of comments and just enter them all at once. I'm going to scroll down now and go through them a bit. For a quick explanation, we first entered the controller configuration mode and set up some RF channels with frequency and NXA and the modulation of 256 QAM with a standard interleaf depth of 12 for NXA. Also we bind the DB tunnels that we made earlier to the RF channels. Then we set the RF power and activate the RF channel and we do this four times each with another frequency. And then we enter the uh, cable interface configuration and set the RF channel as primary channels. Also included is that every cable modem has to download the DOCSIS configuration file using the trivial file transfer protocol before being allowed to register. And this was done with the command tftp enforce. And then follow settings for the uh, cable upstream configuration. Lastly, we also configured a fiber node.
Then we looked on our cable gateway at the DP tunnels with the command show DP tunnel and at the current DP sessions with show DP session. Seems good. That's it for this video. In the video description you will find links to our forum for the commands we entered. If you want to become an ISP yourself, try out Animus Prime. If you want to play around with it, you can download it and install it on your server. There's also a demo system at demo.animusprime.com. You can also take a look at our documentation for Animus Prime, which you can also download. The link can be found in the video description too. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. For new videos, you can subscribe to our channel and for more information about Animus Prime, you can head over to animusprime.com and subscribe to our newsletter. And as always, thanks for watching.